All right, we're getting close to the end of the, this uh, uh, fine-tuning and equalization session, calibration for, for audio, audio calibration is what I like to call it. So we have, uh, just to summarize, we first verified that all the channels are here, all the speakers are working, working, debugged anything that was wrong, reconnected things that may not have been connected correctly, checked the polarity, checked the rattles, checked everything. And then we meticulously went through every channel one at a time um, and equalized it. Equalized it meaning we fed it uh, either pseudo random pink noise or an impulse response sweep. We measured at four microphones on average and gone through and equalized using a digital EQ to get the speaker to measure a target response. The target response starts with a pretty good average of what rooms are supposed to look like on microphones, which is not a flat line. If it was always a flat line, it'd be easier, but it's never quite that way because there's interactions between the speakers and room acoustics and how you perceive it in your ear brain system. But we've gone through one speaker at a time. Um, I'm on the not quite final phase here, but getting close. I'm gonna go ahead and listen using pink noise, full random pink noise going all the way around the room, left, center, right, wide, left, wide, right, side, left, side, right. Just listen to the cons for consistency. I've already done this, I've tuned it, but I just wanna see how it uh, comes out or I just show you what we do and maybe the, the phone will actually pick up the consistency or inconsistency. So here we go. So that's the first off the left channel pink noise. Then we have we got the center channel. Middle, uh, the three front channels are behind the acoustically transparent screen. Then the right channel. Then we go to the wide left. Here, I'm actually going to use my little pointer over here. Check it out. This is the, where the wide left speaker is. And then we go to the right, wide right on the other side of the room. And then we go to the side left. The first side left. And then the first side right. And then we go to the second side left. And we go to the second side right. And then we go to the back left. And we go to the back right. Uh, since we're closer to that speaker, that's going to sound louder to this microphone. Normally you want to do this from the middle of the room. So Tim, our cameraman, is walking to the middle of the room. I'm going to rewind a little bit. Uh, go. I'm just going to go back a few channels here, and uh, we're, we'll start with the side. So this is going to be the side side left one. Side right one. Side left two. Side right two. Back. Back left. Back right. Next up, we're going to go to the top channels. So this is the top. Top right one. Top left two. So behind me. So again, not quite sure what the microphone on that, uh, the mic, the microphone on the telephone is going to pick up, but uh, to our ears, both mine and Tim here, our cameraman, we, we set this all up so that as you go around the room, it all sounds consistent, really important. Um, one next step here before we start spending time listening to program material is we're going to set the time delays. Uh, we've already set the time delays by theoretical distances. Well, that's not close enough. Next thing we're going to do is, is listen to some uh, uh, phantom centers between channels. We're going to do it and we'll come back and talk about that. Yeah, All right, so now that I've gotten the EQ of that speaker right to where pink noise sounds the same coming out of the speaker and coming through my headphones, next thing I'm going to do is say, check with regular music. Now, this is a track I listen to all the time. It's got a lot of dynamics. It's got a lot of cool stuff. And I'm going to go sit over there at the main seat listening to what's being plugged into my ear versus what's coming out of those uh, uh, that speaker. Right now, it's just a center speaker. 
What I'm listening for is the quality of the voice, tonal balance, the character of that snap of the snare. Is it the same tonal balance? If it's a little bit off, the snare is going to sound bigger or smaller than it really is. So I'm just checking out all of that stuff. It's working. Snare sounds exactly the same on here as it does over there, which is good. You can think of a snare drum as a little burst of pink noise, a short one. If it's wrong, you're going to hear the tonal balance changing. But also, Donald Fagan's voice sounds exactly the same. Everything's coming in just right. That's it. We're off to a good start. So I'm going to say that my center speaker is now correctly equalized. Time to go to the other channels and just make them match that level and tonal balance. All right. We're getting to the final phases here of the uh, tuning. Um, so at this point, all of the speakers in this room are, are equalized to sound the same. Equalized being that the, we've adjusted their frequency response so that no matter where they are to both microphones and to the ear, they sound identical and they sound right. Sounding right being compared to in-ear monitors that are highly referenced, they actually correspond, okay? Uh, those are two really important things. They have to sound the same to each other and they also have to sound right. Now, I don't just use the in-ear monitors like I've showed you with, or earlier on, I also listen to music, music that I know both by listening to it and also by comparing to the in-ear monitors. Now, all these speakers are at different places in the room and they all need to arrive at the listening position with a wavefront that's consistent. And a way to test for that is to play phantom centers between pairs of speakers. So for example, the left and right speakers, you wanna make sure they construct a, a, a good phantom center like, like you're used to when listening to two channel stereo. The way I do that is I go into this processor which has the amazing capacity to go ahead and group different channels together. I can play pink noise out of the left and right speakers together and listen for a phantom center. I can adjust levels, I can adjust delays, and I can also adjust what's called an all pass filter, which changes the phase at certain frequencies to make sure that the image that's in the middle is absolutely perfect. I do this trick where I play pink noise in phase and then I go out of phase. There's a button on here that allows me to flip the polarity of the right channel and I'm looking for a, a big hole in the middle, is, which is what should happen when they're out of polarity. If it, Usually there's something that stays and you can actually slide an all-pass network um, in the uh, amplifiers for our speakers and just move it around until you find that, that hole uh, that that, that remaining little section of narrow band pink noise that's staying there because of some phase error somewhere along the way. You slide that and it goes, it just nulls out. Then I actually check in phase and I go, I, you know, b bring the polarity back in and I turn that all pass network on and off and go, hey, did that, Im did that improve the clarity and solidity of the phantom center? And it usually does. So that's just getting the left and right to work, work together. Then I get the left and center to work together. And what should happen when you turn both of those on by telling the signal generator to feed both of those at the same time, you should get an image in the half left point um, as if there was a speaker there. And there again, I'll, I'll adjust levels, maybe delays to move the sound a little bit, maybe an all pass network in the center to make sure everything works right. So that's the half left. I do the same thing with the half right. And then I do the same same thing with the left and wide speaker and then uh, wide and first surround or first side and then first side and second side and just go around the room in pairs. So it's like a pair at a time, making sure that the two of them work consistently producing phantom centers. A proper phantom center that works well is like having twice as many speakers when the whole soundtrack is working. And it's what allows the sound of an airplane to go around you really evenly or a spaceship, uh, which are not supposed to make sound, right? In, in space, there's no sound. But, you know, in movies, that wouldn't work. Um, or a car, whatever it is. Um, that, that actually takes some time. 
and you got to use your ears and your brain has to be connected to your ears and uh I have had people th say, well, maybe the way you hear it will be different to others. I've always double checked that with somebody else that's available and go, tell me where you hear that phantom. And it's remarkable how consistent different people are at hearing those phantom centers once the delays and response and, and uh, phases are all set correctly. So I'm going to do that. Take me, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes to get through all of the channels. And then we're going to listen to some actual program material. <laughs> calibrating the audio on here uh, did some pretty extensive listening tests didn't didn't film that because I don't know what you would be seeing other than or hearing other than boom bam bam crash next thing the other half of, uh, of a home cinema is actually the picture we always joke that hey sound is half of the experience to r remind people that um, you got to have a good sound system but I also like to rem remind people that hey the video is also the other half that's for the you know the audio holics of the world so uh, there's a Christie projector here a big acoustically transparent screen right out of the box that looks absolutely horrible it's all green it's all terrible we're gonna go ahead and calibrate that I'm gonna turn the lights off um, and spend a bunch of time getting that tuned up we're gonna set the grayscale we're gonna set the color imagery. We're gonna set all of the things that need to be set, all of the primaries and secondary points and get that all tuned up.